And welcome to the Vanu Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and a servile society. I'm your host, Shane, coming to you from the Free Republic of Pasnia, the self liberator's paradise. Uh, the website is pasnia.com. Uh, today we finally have a discussion that we've talked, for, uh, talked about uh, having for years, uh, Vanuing in cities. When Kyle and I started the podcast in 2017, it was already a difficult enough subject. Uh, the same could even be said going back to Rayo's time back in the 1960s and 70s. Uh, paper tripping, alternative identities, and uh, the more lax nature regarding identification provided some unique opportunities in his day, uh, but the, that entire landscape has changed most drastically uh, since the uh, 7-Eleven inside job event. Uh, this difficulty is especially true uh, after all the nonsense last year, and undoubtedly so uh, if you find yourself in any uh, in, in one of the uh, beacons of Babylon, uh, you know, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York City, uh, etc., now it's not merely the, the myriad privacy violations uh, when securing housing, white market employment, buying tobacco, uh, etc., but the ramping up of state coercion in concert with uh, Babylonian pharmace uh, Babylon pharmaceuticals, too. So for me personally, I'm with Rayo. Uh, I prefer to be far enough back in the woods. Uh, but some folks, like our guest today, find themselves stuck in the city for the time being uh, for whatever reason, or reasons plural, and uh, are making do as uh, best they can. So I'm joined by a, a gentleman uh, that goes by the pseudonym of Omen uh, that I found in the Pasnia Committee of Correspondence chat, and uh, someone I definitely hope to meet in physical space and time uh, very soon. I will uh, let, let him fill you in on uh, what he can of his situation, what he, what he decides to share. And, uh, uh, but from our, from our initial chat, he's uh, definitely had some interesting encounters with coercers over the past few months uh, that bring some important subjects to light. And uh, towards the end, I figure we can uh, work in a discussion on spirituality and anarchy uh, and how one usually leads to the other. And uh, finally, uh, Omen's transition from the first realm to the second. Uh, it'll provide another case study and example of uh, how, to go, how to go about doing it. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, it's, it's not always clear. I know back uh, when I came across the second realm strategy, um, I know for me, uh, I, I didn't really know how to get from point A to point B. Um, it, was, uh, it wasn't uh, very clear. So uh, another perspective might, uh, might certainly help with that. Uh, but without, without further ado, um, Omen. Welcome to the uh, Vanu podcast. Uh, how are you doing today? Hey Shane, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for inviting me on here to speak. Uh, kind of excited to get get through with this today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on, right on. Well, uh, yeah, I definitely appreciate you taking some time uh, um, and uh, you know sharing some of uh, your experiences. Because uh, even if uh, even if there's not really any great solutions, just uh, another perspective and how to actually deal with it. Um, and be as invulnerable to coercion as possible, I think, is, is really, really valuable. So, again, I do appreciate uh, you coming on here. So, so, I guess, first off, why don't you start by introducing yourself? Uh, I guess, uh, tell us uh, how, how you got to uh, where you are today. You're a freedom-minded individual. I guess, give us a little bit of your background. Well, um, to start, I mean, even from a young age, I've always had a, uh, had a, uh, a problem with authority, um, I mean, lots of lots of young children um, can have that that type of issue, I guess you could call it. And um, that came with uh, ADHD diagnosis, which I carry into my adult life and such. But I've, I've learned to typically manage it without and being able to use it to my advantage in, in certain ways. But uh, coming with that early age of... Um, um, you know, basically just questioning of authority, you know, like, like legitimate questions, whether it be through um, school teachers and, and the, uh, the hierarchy within within the public indoctrination system, or even, you know, within the, uh, the structure and the, um, the, the, the institution of organized religion, you know, um, uh, questioning the authority figures within those ranks as well. And even as a child being silenced because you give them questions that, that they, they, they know the answers to, but they're not going to tell you because it, you know, it, it defeats themselves. It's, it's, uh, the, people run from the truth. And, and that's one thing that I've always enjoyed to try to look into is the truth. And, um, I started that from a young age. Uh, I, I, I uh, kind of fell into libertarianism pretty early on uh, in my life. I was still in high school, uh, discovered, uh, you know, uh, Ron Paul and, and, um, you know, it was, it was, it was actually absolutely um, heartbreaking to myself really to uh, see such a great reasonable level headed individual that actually respects, you know, true liberty that, that that basically be be uh um made into a laughing stock you know on 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 national television 
because he preached ideas of, of peace and, and, and non-interventionalism and, you know, let's, let's actually take care of our people first and, and things of that nature. And, 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 you know, it just made me realize at that point pretty early on that, uh, you know, trying to change things from the inside is, is not the way to go. Um, and then that, that led into just, you know, the, uh, anarchist and voluntarist train of thought and, uh, I'm pretty much evolved, um, like you had mentioned, bringing up the spirituality and, 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 and anarchy thing later on. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's evolved for myself over the years to where I pretty much, I, 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 along the terms that I would like to have a voluntary mutualist society um, mm -hmm. or just, you know, small communities. Um, I personally really don't believe that humans were ever meant to live in these gigantic cities. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and the city that I live in isn't even, you know, a large a large metropolitan city, so but it still has its uh still has its challenges here, especially um just just uh privacy and avoiding busybodies is quite the challenge it seems to be some days. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, well, yeah, that's that's a, a very, very, uh, yeah, very interesting path, and uh, I suppose a, a good transition into uh, into our discussion today. Uh, um, could you, I guess, speak a little to uh, your current living situation? Obviously, don't uh, um, you know, don't give away your town, but the, don't give away your town, mm -hmm. but like your area, all that security culture and such. But give us a you know general idea of your living situation, so we can we can um, have an idea of your Vani home base and and kind of uh, um, I guess uh, um, start with uh, the I guess the recent encounter that. That she brought up in the Pasnia chat that kind of sparked this conversation. Right. Well, um, currently uh, residing in a uh, smaller city, uh, roughly 45, 50,000 inhabitants, I believe. Um, then there's, you know, surrounding smaller, smaller towns and such. And um, really uh, in the city because of uh, of a few factors uh, kind of forced us in the direction of uh, having to take up residence within the city limits um, was one, the availability of, um, of rentals and, and um, you know, uh, there's so many, there's so many hurdles and, and rings and hoops to jump through to try to get a, get a mortgage for anything. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I have a uh, pretty good um, job and such. But then uh, they, they, they don't accept my, uh, my pay legitimately because it's not by the hour. So then there's like I have to wait uh -huh. like a, you know, a certain amount of time before I can able to qualify for, for a, um, a mortgage or anything so I can obtain my own lane and do things that I would like to do. So, so then I'm limited on, 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 you know, location based on where rentals are open up. And sure. um, in the area that I live in, um, I can say comfortably Ohio um, rentals in the um, in the country are, are few and far between, especially mm -hmm. uh, around here. People tend to um, snatch them up pretty quickly and then they don't normally they don't normally move out of them, you know, until they either, you know, they pass away or they um, build their own or buy their own um, either or. So, um, I mean, it's just kind of like. Not necessarily forced, but just a lack of options, you know, um, unfortunately. And then, then you know, necessarily you don't always get to choose your neighborhood even even to that factor, you know. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's offering its uh, unique challenges to just try to live a peaceful life, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that that's that's certainly true because uh, you know obviously we would uh, uh, you know it'd, it'd be good uh, you know like with Vanu with strategic relocation uh, you go you try to check off a list of factors but you you don't if you don't really have a choice and you're kind of stuck next to, to shitty people um, that's uh, that's really unfortunate um, but uh, but yeah as as I kind of as I kind of mentioned in the beginning. Uh, to preface this conversation, you know, I've got to do what we got to do, right? And um, unfortunately, just the the way the system the the way the system is set up, it's not it's not set up to make things easy or uh, um, or yeah, privacy friendly. So, um, I guess, uh, um, do you want to talk a, a little bit about uh, I guess the recent encounter with coercers that you had, and uh, and and yeah, there's a couple couple interesting uh, points of discussion to bring up around that, but uh, we'll start there. Absolutely. Um, well, I. I uh... I drive for a living. Um, 
currently. Um, I'm 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 every day working towards um, becoming more of my own boss. Um, in the process of starting my own company, because that ultimately leads more to personal freedom, uh, which is what I, uh, you know, that's that's my greatest desire. Um, anyway, so I uh, I have permission from the company to park my my truck at home. So I parked it out in front of the street, and for quite some time had no issues whatsoever. And then um, one day, uh, one of the neighbor ladies, I'm not sure exactly where she lives obviously somewhere around the area because she drives by the house and she stops and says you can't park that there you know da 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 and and myself being an experienced driver i i knew there's there's laws in the cities and stuff that prevent you from being able to you know drive the truck down certain streets and such but i i had even looked that up um and then i um spoke with a supervisor at the local um extortionist office you know for the road pirates <laughs> and i uh um i even asked him you know hey is this all right and he's like yeah that's that's not a problem i'm like all right cool so neighbor lady um ends up calling the um the uh, gestapo on me a couple times the first two encounters the uh, officer um walks up and basically um, um literally said like i have no idea what i'm doing here like i don't see anything wrong and then just left eventually um the third time that she had called the uh the local police and they show up it was a sergeant and a uh, young patrol officer and uh i go out there i'm speaking to him in the front yard and and the uh the sergeant's basically just explaining to me hey there is an ordinance da 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 um and i so i asked him i'm like can you pull it up i you know i'd like to know what what it says and and see it for myself. And um, basically, it said, um, "Hey, um, you're allowed to park your truck here if your adjo- adjacent neighbors are okay with it." That lady lives nowhere adjacent to my property, and mm-hmm. none of the other neighbors have a problem with it. So I'm not sure exactly what the actual issue was. Maybe they were tired of the lady calling the police department. But uh, so they they basically forced me to find another location to park my truck, which then incurred a, now I have to pay a monthly parking fee. So extra money on top of that. And then I get to, you know, drive to work. So, you know, uh, fuel costs, although minimum, but still um, I was saving money by doing so. And then because some, some uh, neighbor who just, may not be happy with their life for whatever reason decides that uh my truck is an eyesore and doesn't want to see it on the block or something you know and And now now you have another uh, expense kind of inconvenient even if it's small oh yeah Yeah. absolutely it's it's just another inconvenience (laughs) even if it is small it's still a hundred percent you know and um you know, you, you, you try not to get upset with these people because a lot of them really ultimately, in, in my opinion, are just really misguided. You know, they, they're living in a fantasy world. They're living a lie and they just don't realize it, you know. So, yeah. um, but the, the shameful part is, is people don't necessarily always understand what they're doing when they call the cops on somebody. You know, you, you're, you're, calling, you're calling men or women, you're calling people with supposed authority to come to somebody's house if they're doing, you know, I'm, I'm a completely peaceful person. So what reason is there for armed members of a state sponsored gang to come to my house? You Mm -hmm. know, um, and people don't realize the implications that that can have, you know, how many times do we see throughout the news every day that, that, um, you know, innocent, unarmed people are getting shot in situations that you you question. Why would the officer pull their gun out in the first place? You know, so it's 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 just it's it's honestly kind of scary. I mean, obviously, for some grass, um, it's it's a lot more um, frightening to have an encounter with the police, as as history shows that. Uh, that uh, there's there's issues there that are disproportionately affecting um, some other demographics, you know, uh, which is unfortunate. But you, you you look at it, 
in, in, in the picture in the hall and everybody's getting it. You know, it's it's not just it's not just the minority population. It's it's everybody. And people don't realize that. Um, and, and, and that's coming across. And, and and it's it's the state versus people that are free, really. Um, the the supporters of the state rarely um, have any issues you know, with the, with the, uh, enforcers and such, but, um, right. it makes it dangerous for somebody that just wants to live their life as a free person, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. And, and that, br I mean, that brings up at, 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 so yeah, that's, uh, um, sorry, sorry to jump in real quick, but that, that brings up a really, really good point. You're fine. And it's, uh, um, we've talked about it on this podcast before, but like, uh, you know, vetting people, um, you know, who you associate with is very, very important because that's usually, um, you know, public coercion from the state um, almost always comes as a result of private and, you know, private individuals. As in your case, it was, you know, a neighbor that called um, the blood cheese. They wouldn't have been out there if it wasn't for her call, if it wasn't for that initiation. So um, they very likely wouldn't have been out there. I guess I can put it that way. You don't know anything for sure. Right. Um, but uh, uh, so so that that's an important point is, you know, vet, vet, vetting people um, is super important. If you carefully vet your associates. Um, you know, much trouble can be mitigated, but, um, uh, as, as we were talking about in your case with, with Vanu and City, sometimes there's not really a choice and you're kind of stuck with who you're stuck with. And, um, now you're, you're kind of dealing with, unfortunately, a little bit of, a uh, little bit of fallout from that and an additional expense and an inconvenience. And, uh, you know, and, and certainly, uh, certainly worth, I guess, uh, recognizing yet yeah, a, a, uh, I guess surviving an encounter with, uh, with coercers, which is the most important part. But, uh, um, yeah, I guess any, any thoughts, any thoughts on that? Um, I mean, right. Um, well, my thought, my thoughts on, uh, on, um, on that really is, is, is it's, it's, it's all by proxy. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's you, the, the individual, the private individual can, can essentially use the, the, the state sponsored thugs to, to get what they want, you know, especially when there's arbitrary victimless um, laws and, and such on the, on the books that say, Oh, you, you can't do this or you can't do that. Even though it's literally victimless, it's not hurting literally anything. Somebody just perhaps doesn't like it. So, um, and that, and, and we see clearly the dangers of, of using um, the state agents as your own little personal enforcers in ways is, is especially like with the uh, upcoming um, red flag laws in some of the states and such, um, you know, all that takes is just a, you know, a nosy, nosy ticked off neighbor that doesn't like you. And then all of a sudden you got cops kicking down your door because the neighbor said made up a lie or whatever, or, you know, your uh, ex-girlfriend's mad because you kicked her out or, you know, there's, there's a multitude of different reasons mm -hmm. uh, why people could uh, definitely ma manipulate the, uh, the state for their own nefarious purposes and reasons. Right, right. And a rainwater collection barrel is probably probable cause in many jurisdictions. So, I mean, it doesn't take much. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just it's worth pointing out, uh, you know, choose who, you're, choose who you associate with and you can avoid, uh, you know, a lot of issues. Um, again, cities may not always be possible, but uh, certainly a principle to, to try to live by. Um, <clears throat> now, you mentioned uh, you mentioned something else and. Uh, you mentioned the word proxy. I'll go in a different direction with this, but um, there's a, a a second realm, I guess, a second realm um, method, uh, you know, utilizing a proxy merchant, someone, an, an intermediary between the first and the second realm. And um, I really don't think, like, in terms of Vanu's, Vanu and Cities as a strategy, I don't think it's really possible without having, um, without utilizing a proxy merchant. Um, I, I really don't think it's possible. Obviously, um, you know, in, in your situation, there might be a landlord or something, um, which would be, I guess, one version of a, pro which, which, would, which would be a proxy merchant. Um, hopefully, they're more, you know, second realm minded, but that's not always possible either. Um, but yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, Vanu and Cities is possible without, uh, without a proxy merchant. Um, and yeah, in general, just for acquiring land anywhere. Um, just, uh, especially, especially in cities with nuisance abatement, with all those, with all the, all the ordinances, um, a lot of places, if you try to go off grid and you're in, 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 in an incorporated area, um, you can oftentimes face a lot of trouble from bureaucrats. So, I mean, um, hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. That's that's kind of an initial initial thought there. So you've I I I 
if I recall, I think you've got a landlord. Um, in your experience, um, is, it, is it kind of a requirement that you have to, you have, you can't just kind of, I guess, have self-reliance or independence in, the, in that area? You kind of have to go through proxy merchant? Um, at, at this time, currently, um, um, yeah, the proxy merchant via, via using the landlord is probably the, uh, the best route. <laughs> um, I definitely don't want to ever even consider purchasing uh, any parcels within the city limits to begin with, uh, uh, just because of the ordinances alone. And, and and I don't want any anything, you know, the the less the less eyes looking over what I'm doing in my peaceful life is is the better, you know, um, which is why I want to move out to the country. Regardless, um, the uh, uh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> proxy merchant. Dang it, man. I'm sorry. You're all right. All right. You're all right. Proxy merchant. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> crap, man. Okay. Landlords kind of kind of sucks because, uh, you know, landlords then have their own little stipulations and rules on top of, you know, what the city may or may not have. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting some, uh, some planners and stuff, basically homemade planners. Uh, so I don't have to dig up the ground and, and worry about the uh, the landlord, um, you know, uh, complaining about that. Um, there's there's several things that I could be doing that could be benefiting myself, saving money, and becoming more self efficient and self sufficient. But uh, I, I can't do any of that stuff because the landlord basically, you know, has has control over everything there. So I'm pretty much stuck in a in a spot currently where I'm forced to have to appeal to the landlord and the local, you know, the local government and such, just, just so I can scrape by unnoticed at the moment, you know? Um, yeah. And even that's proven to be hard to do because um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting harassed by neighbors that I don't even know. And, and uh, they're sending, you know, armed, armed men with guns to come up and, and, and force me to move my truck and occur more monthly fees, making it even more difficult. You know, it's, it's almost like you said, the whole system is designed for it. And, um, you know, to keep you, keep, keep the, uh, the, the, I guess the right word would be the poorer population, um, down, you know, I think, uh, I think I've seen it's roughly like 50% or more of American families live check to check, you mm -hmm. know, and um, many things like having to be forced to use a, a landlord um, and not being able to have the, uh, the privilege to be able to purchase your own property um, really um, inhibits quite a few things and, and, and forces people to keep, um, you know, working these jobs in the servile society and preventing them from, from dedicating time to, you know, say, uh, uh, planting a, a nice garden on an orchard or um you know uh, uh paying attention and 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 upkeep on a on a greenhouse so they can provide their own food which would you know ultimately be better for their overall health and and even uh you know save a bunch of money from going to the stores and um and then you know how many people usually go to you know just going to Walmart you know, now you're supporting this mega corporation a lot of people neglect to you know, visit their local uh, farmers markets and such, which is really where where we should be going these days mm -hmm. if we don't have it ourselves. Yeah, it's so a, it's, a, it's all, all about proxy. disempowerment. Yeah, all about disempowerment, taking away uh, taking away people's ability to to take care of themselves. And at such a fundamental level, you mentioned food. Um, that's that's something, that, especially after the past year. Or so like, I can't I can't believe I was so dependent on grocery stores for food for so long. Um, like, uh, and I still am to, 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 to a large extent, we're not to food self sufficiency yet, but we're working towards it. But, um, I mean, it's, uh, <clears throat> just, just something as basic as that being able to raise and, you know, being able to, to raise and, you know, raise and take care of your own food is, um, is absolutely huge. And once you, you kind of, once you start going in that direction, um, you do realize how much power you have. Um, so yeah, it's, it is about just taking away those very, very little things. Um, and yeah, keeping people in that, uh, you know, cycle where if you, if you can barely pay for your food, then you're certainly not, um, you're, you're, you're not really in a position to, to, to do much. Um, yeah, cer certainly not. 
Right. And then and then even coming with that is is just a just a whole fear that uh, a lot of people in civil society have when it comes to um, well, a combination of the of the, the money that's available or what they have. And then um, also the cost of goods and the availability, you know, look at look at uh, just an example last year, the toilet paper crisis. You know, mm. how ridiculous was that? Or, um, you know, now just recently there was the uh, the fuel shortages and and a bunch of people panic buying cause legitimate fuel shortages like, hey, you know, <laughs> um, and, and, and that's all, in my opinion, part of the part of the system, too. You know, they they plug that stuff in there to uh, to to steer the panic. You know, uh, crowds of people are easy to predict sometimes when when you're using fear to control them, you know. Um, yeah. and, and that and that's another ultimate goal is really to exit servile society and and really, you know, once once you're the provider of your own your own goods um, and you're able to sustain your own fresh water, power and, and food by yourself or, you know, with the help of others in a voluntary community, um, then 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 you realize you, you don't really have you don't really have much to fear. You know, you don't. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the uh, the the pipelines going down, or have to worry about the the grocery stores running out of supplies because of a winter storm or anything like that. You have everything you need in your own little community, you know. And mm -hmm. um, there's even, you know, the possibility you and I have discussed before, just um, um, trading trading with other second realm territories and such as is, you know. Um, Obviously, some climates may be better suited for growing certain things than, and 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 like and you know uh, than the opposite. So um, mm -hmm. use that to our advantage, or even you know just uh, manufacturing capabilities um, and and being able to kind of spread things out, um, but be able to network in between them and 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 mutually benefit from those interactions. Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly, and that's uh, and that's definitely in the process of being put together. Um, definitely in the process of being put together, and already, yeah, already uh, in a way is uh, is is, is uh, the foundation is, is definitely there. But um, I want to I, I want to there, there's one other element, and Kyle and I talked about this probably once in season two, just briefly talked about what, what Rayo mentioned um, back in the sixties and seventies. But uh, one of the components, one one of the things that I noticed when I'm in cities is. Um, uh, Rayo called it the city psycho city psychological pressures, but um, I just feel I I just don't like being in cities personally. That's why I live out. That's why I'm out where I am. That's why I'm out where I, where I am. Um, but um, yeah, city psychological pressures. I've I've got it pulled up uh, in the book. He, it's just a couple of paragraphs. He said, um, "For me, anonymity alone was unsatisfactory because of city psychological pressures. I was immersed in an alien culture with values hostile to my own. Whether or not I was especially vulnerable, I felt vulnerable." I know of quite a few Vanuists and Libertarians who live of humble ways, um, basically Vanu uh, uh, in cities, but I know none who seem to like it for very long. Perhaps there are ways to cope with the psychological pressures. If you think you have found a way, tell us, but personally I prefer to live far enough back in the woods. So I guess um, you're in the, you're in, in the city, you're uh, uh, like my individual, we're, we're, on, the, we're on the same uh, you know, wavelength with a lot of these things. Um, so I, I can I can only imagine you, you kind of feel some of those those same those same sort of pressures living in the city. Um, I guess could could you speak to that and also kind of ways that you cope with that and deal with it? Oh, I mean, yeah, I could I could understand where uh, where Ray is coming from with the uh, with the pressure in the cities. Um, I guess I guess it's kind of like a societal quote unquote standards or whatnot. You know, like um, I guess you know, like like uh, mowing your lawn. You know, um, if I had a place out in the country, I would I would replace um, a majority of the area that I would be using with uh, something other than grass, you know, um, moss or um, red creeping thyme or something that's, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't overgrow. But then it's also still good yard covering and stuff. You can walk on it, but you don't have to mow it, you know, and then and then a, and then a vast majority of the yard that is unused or such, I would really just uh let it to go 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 wild you know let nature do its thing um if you're not using the 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 entirety of that land you know let let, let nature take its course on it you know and until you're ready you know maybe you want to plant some fruit trees in that area or something but i mean what, what's the purpose of of wasting the time and and the uh, resources to to upkeep 
you know, that part of the yard if you're not going to, you know, utilize it. So I don't know, just certain things like that, um, I guess, societal standards and, and, and um, stuff and, and, and that point uh, just kind of kind of bothers me, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. <sighs> dealing with it, I just, you know, got to get the lawn mode and it's uh, sometimes it's a chore between, you know, balancing work and, and uh, schedules and in the, the rain schedule here in the spring. Um, then uh, other other things of that nature, I guess, is just, uh, you know, when you want to enjoy certain things um, just in your own property, in your own your own little you, you're trying to have some privacy or, um, you know, if you want want some loud music or something, then you got to worry about uh you know, neighbors, you know, the, the, the servile citizens that live next to you that are all, Hey, let's, let's call them and, you know, send, send police to their house to force them instead of, you know, just maybe coming down themselves and saying, Hey, you know, music's too loud or something like that. But yeah, treating, um, treating each other as human beings, so, fellow humans. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. I mm -hmm. mean, you think that would be a pretty simple concept, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess, I guess that could be viewed as a pressure as well as just, uh, the, uh, the constant, I guess, need to kind of, it's, it's almost like walking on an eggshell type of thing because yeah. you don't know any of your neighbors really. And, and especially myself, I don't, in, in, in the city like that, I don't, I don't feel like I want to get to know those neighbors. Um, and, and it's not nothing against them personally. It's just that, uh, I don't want to be open up to uh, to a more vulnerable position with people who could literally just, you know, watch everything that I'm doing because my house is right there. You know, I'd, I'd rather live in a community of people that I, like you said, a, a, a vetting of sorts. So, you know, if there is community presence, it's all people that you know that that are peaceful. And and um, I mean, a prime example is that of that is uh, some years back, I was still living in the same um, city that I am now. And, uh, my neighbor robbed me, breaking and broken, entered into the, uh, garage and, and stole many of my items, you know, um, that was, you know, how, how do you, you know, I, how do I know nobody else in, the, in, in my new neighborhood is like that? And I don't, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the, the chances of, uh, of a majority of them being, you know, I guess in the cult of statism is, is, uh, is uh too great of a chance i i guess for myself to to want to get to know people especially with the with the long term um ideas not to be there you know i i i have um some short term goals to be able to get out of there and and get outside of any corporate limits you know i don't i don't want to be inside any corporation so um yeah uh, yeah a lot of other things, I guess, could be just, you know, like you, you even mentioned, um, you know, rainwater collection can be, you know, a probable cause in some jurisdictions. Like, you know, you, you even have simple stuff like that. Like, how, how, how do I know that uh, if I don't set up a rainwater collection system that either A, my proxy merchant, a.k.a. landlord, would, would you know, get upset about it, or the, the same lady that had a problem with, uh, you know, the eyesore the truck sitting out front, you know, what if, uh, what if they have a problem with a rain collection system, you know, and then that just starts more trouble. And it's, it's, it's all I really want at the end of the day is, uh, I just want some peace, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just want to be left alone, but the, the, uh, state and the survival society can't do that, but that's why we're, uh, we're building, uh, building a second realm. Um, yeah, well, yeah, very good. I, I, well, I appreciate, right. uh, I appreciate all that. Yeah. Do you have, sorry, do you have anything else? Uh, I don't want to cut you off. Oh, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. All right. Um, good. So that, that's uh, that's the only, I guess, real extra I wanted to pull from uh, from Bonnie the Search Personal Freedom. But, um, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's it. I appreciate uh, that, uh, that insight. I guess um, something else we could um, move, move forward to here, and I guess is more, more just a general, a general, um, general discussion, kind of moving past just the Vanu and cities now. Um, I guess before I do that, um, 
Were there any other, I guess, general strategies you found um, for, I guess, uh, any tips or strategies you found to avoid or mitigate coercion, um, you know, living in the city or dealing with the survival society that, uh, that, that you could share? Oh, yeah, um, absolutely, 100%. Um, number one, I mean, um, to avoid corrosion in the city and such, uh, you look at um, what's what's the number one interaction just about anybody's going to have with, with the uh, the police officers in, in society is um, traffic stops. So yeah. um, over the years, um, over the years, I've I've uh, been stopped for oh, countless many different things and, and had my fair share of positive and negative interactions with the uh, with the state enforcers. But um, I've learned how to avoid even getting pulled over. Um, and the biggest thing is, is really just, you know, you, you got to be paying attention to your driving. It's, it's, it's critical, you know. Um, um, know your local traffic ordinances and such. Um, you know, a lot of people, um, the interactions with uh, the involuntary illegal traffic stops usually happen because of minor traffic infractions, um, you know, they, technically, you know, they can pull you over for going a couple miles over the speed limit, yeah. um, you know, not using the turn signal properly. Um, you know, some states probable cause is not having a front license plate displayed on your vehicle. Um, there's there's many different reasons. Um, but basically, I would I would tip and say advice on that. Um would be to uh, uh, learn the the traffic laws, learn uh, the moving violations that constitute probable cause to initiate a traffic stop in the first place. Because mm-hmm. um, once they initiate contact, is is when uh, when the uh, the scales drastically tip into possibly not turning out in your favor, and that could be for whatever reason. Um, I've even had a situation in the past where. Um, I was legally carrying a concealed weapon. I had had my um, my license to carry a concealed weapon, and then I proceeded to be charged with carrying a concealed weapon. And then myself um, being a little upset about the entire situation because it shouldn't have been happening in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, then I get slapped with a disorderly conduct. So now, so now, uh, you know. Um, um, once again, the, the, the state enforcers come into play. Um, that one, I guess, was a noise complaint. And, and I don't even know how because I literally had just arrived home from work and they pull up behind me in the cruiser. So, you know, um, that. Uh, um, so try to avoid <laughs> getting pulled over in the first place, you know, uh, making mm-hmm. sure, you know, um, if you're still, you know, if you're still one of the individuals that uh, register their vehicles with the state and make sure that's up to date, you know, um, uh, license plate lights, um, a useful tip uh, from a professional driver's point of view is, is, uh, you know, check your lights on your car, you know, um, you start it up and do a walk around, make sure nothing looks, um, you know, like it's going to fall off or, or, uh, um, you know, make sure all your light bulbs are functioning because that's just one simple excuse for a road pirate to pull you over and, mm-hmm. and then try to invade your privacy and possibly um, take your freedom and up to your life, you know, um, even for some of the most minor of infractions. Uh, so that that would be really one big piece of advice. Um, yeah, you and, know, and I, I will, I will and mention, then, uh, and, uh, obvious... and, and Kyle Reardon, just below the surface, got a security cool tree, talks about uh, driving an inconspicuous car, and uh, I'd say, yes, driving an, driving an incon- inconspicuous car inconspicuously. Um, and that's, yeah, that's 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 something I've done for, <laughs> for years. Yeah, if you don't even give them a reason, there's no reason that, that they can't pull you over if you don't give them a reason. So don't give them a reason. It's that easy. Like It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty seamless logic. <laughs> Obviously, it's not a 100% success rate. It doesn't always... Um, doesn't always work, but it, it's it's work. It, it works out a lot more than it doesn't. I guess I'll put it that way. <laughs> right, right, right. And and I mean, absolutely, nothing nothing is ever a hundred percent when uh, when they can just literally pull you over for no reason and then make up an excuse. You know, oh your your license plate light was out, but it's working now. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, you mind if I but, take a look? Must have been a short. Like no. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Um, must have been a you short. You know, sometimes huh. it seems like any excuse they can any excuse they can get to pull you over, they do it. You know. Um, but yes, really, I mean, the ultimate strategy there is to uh, try to draw the least amount of attention to yourself as possible. Um, so, I mean, really, that just comes down to, you know, hey, follow these traffic laws. I know, you know, some of them is like, well, it kind of sucks sometimes, you know, driving the exact speed limit. But the more you do it, the more you get used to it and, and you learn, you know, time, you know, if, if you're speeding – as a professional driver, you know, I've, I've noticed people speeding and then, you know, you catch up to them at the next stoplight or anything like yep. that. It's just like you're not really saving any of that <laughs> that much time. So why not just go the speed limit and then you just drastically reduced your chances of having an involuntary interaction with the police. Right, right. And if you're talking about like a 30, 30, 30 minute or an hour commute, like you're talking about maybe shaving a couple few minutes or maybe five minutes off. Like it's not that significant anyway. <clears throat> and yeah, to avoid the entire possibility of a coercive encounter altogether is yeah the the preferable strategy in, in my viewpoint. Uh, certainly, are, you know, different people. Maybe some others might have different perspectives, and that's totally fine. But uh, um, yeah, I'm at least with you. I, I agree. Um, <laughs> um, very good, very good. Uh, anything else? Uh, any other tips or strategies you'd like to share? Well, I mean, the uh, I, I guess I guess that. Um, I guess uh, another another tip would be, um, you know, trying trying to identify certain people in your neighborhood, you know, um, as far as uh, people that may be, um, I guess, sympathetic to the idea of liberty or actually, you know, legitimately support it. Um, some time ago, I uh, was fortunate enough to have a neighbor who uh, became a good friend because we shared like views as far as you know, individual liberty and such. But, you know, there's there's often um, signs that one can see that others normally don't really recognize right away that says, hey, I should go talk to that person. But, you know, typically you can usually tell a, uh, a you know, if a, flat, uh, if a blue line flag's hanging out in front of your neighbor's porch, uh, they probably support the police and would probably call and report you if you did anything remotely resembling something illegal <laughs> you know it's kind of it's it's i don't know it's um it, it can be a fickle situation sometimes especially you know like i said earlier you don't even necessarily get to choose the neighborhood that you want to be in sometimes you know um and 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 i mean that's that's the way the cookie crumbles and <laughs> right. i uh I can't think of anything else right off the top of my head. I mean, there's there's ways to try to try to get yourself a little bit more um, healthy right off rip. You know, uh, obviously you could have yourself your planters above ground so you're not worried about uh, messing with the landlord's property and any trouble with that direction. Um, you can, you know, you could get a uh, um, RO water systems installed so you can, you know. Uh, get the uh the city added fluoride out of your water and any other additives that they have in there you know it's uh that that's that's another step in the right direction to mm -hmm. to being better to a healthier holer you and such um and that ultimately you know ties into uh being a freer person you know is is having that ability to uh to provide your own so the the city provides you with you know poisoned water and you can turn around and provide yourself with clean water. Um, you just have to go through the steps and measures to do so, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, and ultimately, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's lots of different little things like that. I mean, there's, uh, you know, you could, you could always try to look up your own alternative power source, but once again, then you come in within the city limits and, and you have, you know, uh, the landlord's restrictions and such too so that that just really limits things and um so yeah i mean other tips is just uh you know um Oh gosh, I don't know. Edit that part out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. That's uh, all, all, all good stuff. All good stuff. Uh, and and uh, yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate it. especially the um, um, you re reemphasizing the uh, inconspicuous driving portion. Um, yeah, certainly. So I guess um, uh, I, I mentioned at the beginning I wanted to get into a little discussion on 
I guess the spirituality and anarchy portion. Because I know for me, I've been uh, within the anarchy realm, the anarchist realm and solutions for you know five, uh, you know five or five or so years, um, at least before you know last year, before last year. And um, uh, yeah, I, I went on kind of a mission to reverse my my so-called type one diabetes, and that led me to a lot of uh, a lot of I guess interesting paths. Like it, it led me to like natural law, and I guess it led me to like a Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine, um, which then tied into you know the hermetic principles, which then you know Mark Passio's presentation on natural law, like all of it, all of it kind of uh, kind of tied together. And um, it's yeah, it's it's all uh, it's all kind of interrelated, it seems. But um, I know uh, in our in our com- in our uh, you know previous conversation, uh, you've kind of uh, um, I guess gotten into the same sort of stuff we recognize the same sort of things that uh you know people can start at you know like that that more spiritual or religious angle and end up in anarchy um and the same thing with, with the same thing with anarchists an- anarchism um i guess leading to spirituality or natural law i mean it's, it's saying it's all saying the same thing um whether it's non-aggression principle on more kind of the the, the apolitical uh, apolitical end or um you know the the golden rule from kind of the religious or spiritual angle so i guess um with that wide opening i'm not sure where you want to go with it but um, i guess you want to tell give us a, a little bit of your your, your thoughts on, on that overall subject? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, kind of like when we touched on it briefly before, um, I, I believe in, in doubtedly that uh, um, at some point, one path intersects the other. Um, either, uh, this, you know, true spirituality, I'm not talking, you know, just, just religious folk that they're blindly following religious leaders. Um, I'm talking, you know, true people that are having a, 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 that have gone through a spiritual transformation and, and have found, um, you know, the truth um, within our own power and, and, and what and who we really are and everything in in that matter. But um, I I believe it ultimately um, every time will, will lead one to the other. I, uh, I was in the, um, voluntarious train of thoughts for over a decade before um i had given any thought to any type of spirituality um right yeah and um it's 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 kind of actually um it's actually pretty pretty funny when i sit back and look at it because uh synchronicity there is just uh once once the uh the uh, spirituality and um um beliefs came into play and um, I, I made the connection between the two and, and everything of that matter. Um, things seem to have exponentially accelerated for me as far as uh, networking and um, ideas and um, goals to attain in the future and, and ways mm-hmm. to get there and, and finding other other like-minded individuals. You know, um, it's, it's, it's actually quite fascinating and, and, and pleasant at the same time. Um, yeah, and that's and what that's I, what pretty I, much I, everyone's I, reporting. But yeah, that that's yeah, it's it's incredible. But yeah, go ahead. Um, I mean, and that, and then uh, you know, uh, some of my uh, some of my good friends, they uh, they you know, they they went years on the spiritual part, and then it comes to a realization that if you're uh, if you're practicing, you know, true spirituality, that that the that the uh, ancients taught, you know, you had the Christ, um, Yeshua, or commonly known as Jesus, um, you know, the Buddha, and, you know, many other um, spiritual texts throughout history, and they all teach, you know, uh, it boils down to the same thing. They all, they all pretty much teach you the same thing, and 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 a really big majority of that, I mean, um, is uh, self-rule, self-reliance, self-governance. Um, you know, uh, nobody, nobody legitimately, legitimately has um, the um, authority or any kind of power over another person. You know, every everything that's that's involuntary, involuntarily um, done to another individual is done usually under corrosion or um, you know threat of force, violence, you know, whatever. Um, and um, that's. Uh, that's the opposite of any any kind of um, any kind of teaching of uh, any of the spiritual text, you know. Um, so uh, I, I believe, um, without a doubt, that eventually um, people that that see the truth on the spiritual side of things eventually come to see our our um, government, any government, um, for what they what they really are and that's simply just a way to control the people and and um, you even see it in today 
Um, the United States is one of the biggest perpetrators in, in uh, this, this avenue, but um, um, profiting off of um, exploring one's uh, consciousness, um, being able to have the ability to um, have um, medical um, substances that come from our own earth is even prohibited in some regions. Uh, it's, 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 it's wrong. I mean, really, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that, but, um, gosh, well, you're going to have to edit that out too. I had a brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're all right. You're all right. No, that, no, it's, 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 it's all good. No, it is. It's all good, man. All good. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, um, it's it's surprising it didn't happen sooner because I'd, I'd come across some of these things, but you you kind of have to be in a uh, I guess you, you kind of got to be in a I guess it's got to be the right time for for these things and I guess for for a lot of folks that happened uh, that happened last year um, and um, yeah I know uh, it's and it's 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 fascinating for me because I, I I mentioned you know the health portion of it that's my my that's my main focus but um, you find all of the all of the spiritual stuff kind of overlaps and corresponds with it too. Um, and then you, you get into things like uh, um, <clears throat> you get into things like um, like medical astrology too, which I would have thought was just pure nonsense. But right. um, no, like it's it's like Vedic astrology, <laughs> um, which is a uh, I guess it's 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 one of the one of the, the uh, one of the branches of, of Ayurveda. Like no, there's a lot of truth to it. Like it's 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 crazy. Um, like I I, I would have never thought that there'd be legitimacy to it, but there is. Um, so yeah, like it's, it's, it's just, uh, really, I think one of the, the, I guess the, um, I guess the, the biggest thing is just trying, trying to see beyond, I guess, or try, trying to, I guess, see beyond the programmed, you know, fake reality. Um, cause it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot, a lot of, a uh, lot of years of programming for a lot of folks and in, indoctrination camps and then, um, you know, government controlled media and, uh, flicker, flicker rates and all that. Um, yeah, there's uh there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, mind control and programming to, to, to break, uh, to break. Free oh, from. oh, oh, ab absolutely. I, I agree. I, I like to point that out to people a lot. You know, you, you have the indoctrination system. It's, it's, it's compulsory, you know, they, they, they'll arrest you, the parents and throw them in jail if the kid doesn't go, you know, um, there's, um, you know, the, the local media, the national media, then you have, uh, Hollywood, you have, um, all look at, look at how many movies are produced and, you know, United States is always the good guy or, you know, you have, um, you know, superhero cop movies where, you know, the police are the, always the good guys and saving the day and stuff. And, you know, um, ultimately it's just subliminal little tiny things here and there throughout society. And, and, um, people don't realize it, you know, that, that, uh, symbology, numerology, lots of, lots of different factors can take into effect in their everyday lives without them even noticing. And, and, uh, continue the indoctrination throughout their entire lives you know uh, some people some people never never wake up from the truth or from the lie and discover the truth that uh, that uh, they're not living in a, in the land of the free you know it's um, um, if we were free we wouldn't have the largest you know incarcerated population per capita of the world you know that's 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 a misnomer and, and, and right there is just propaganda as well you know um, um, how many, you know, how many phrases do, do you hear on the media? Um, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, oh, this is a danger to our democracy. And, 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 uh, you know, right after you had nine 11, you had, um, you know, uh, how many times you, you probably heard the word terrorist or terrorism on the TV on the news channel, probably 50 times in a single hour. It was ridiculous. You know, um, it's just all conditioning. And a lot of people, they just they don't they don't actually realize that they don't look at the big picture, you know. Um, and and, and I, I try to point that out to people, you know, all the time. And um, it's 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 absolutely encompassing it's uh you know they they have poison in the air they got poison in our water they got poison in our food and our soap and 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 people wonder you know uh certain rates of this and that start climbing you know cancer and and other ailments and 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 you look at you know 
what what are these people taking into their bodies every day? You bring up the health portion of it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's um, there's there's suppressed medical technologies out there. You know, um, there's there's actual ways to eradicate um, mm -hmm. um, cancer cells, certain types of cancer cells. I'm sure you may have heard of like Dr. Reif. Um, oh, yeah. Literally yeah. destroyed, uh, found the resonant frequency of certain types of cancer cells and such, and could destroy cancer cells using literally sound. You know, right? And, and why and, and, is that not widely and we, known? And we, and we should emphasize that, like, yeah, but there's there's probably like a dozen or so. Like, it's not just like one or two. It's like there's it's just like more more. Right. There's more more being discovered. Like it's uh um yeah it's right right. Yeah. That and that, and then you you know you look at you look at so many different technologies that are being suppressed. That's that's another thing. Um, you know they're they're starting to um, disclose this stuff little by little, but they also have these distractions. You know, you had the the pandemic last year, and um, you know, but but then you know the CIA releases official documents saying that you know hey um, chakras are real, um, meditation works. You know. Um, um, raising your vibration is a legitimate thing. Like all of these things are coming out and telling the public, Hey, it's true. People just ain't paying attention. You know, it's, it's like, uh, people are only going to want to wake up when, when, when the time is right for them. And, and sometimes they never get to that point, you know, um, yep. we can't force them there either. The only thing we can do is, uh, try to plant little seeds, you know, try to, try to find some clever, um, non-aggressive, you know, because some people, you know, when you try to plant certain seeds, they, they kind of take offense to it. So got to try to get clever and, and find ways to uh, plant seeds of, of, of the paths and thoughts of liberty and, and um, get people away from the, the thoughts that they need certain things just to survive. I mean, all we really need is, well, community, you know, um, and some people obviously can do it by themselves, but <laughs> right. um, we don't we don't need this entirety of society. And, and in my opinion, you you may agree, but if if uh, current current things keep going the way they're going, we're gonna we're gonna deplete the the resources on the on the only planet that we have currently. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> right. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So. Um. I guess what we've got. We've been going for for about an hour here. Um. And. Uh. Yeah. I. Pr I appreciate. Uh, that. That. That's. Uh. You know. I guess uh, your your views and perspective on the the spirituality and anarchy. Um. Stuff. But. Uh, I guess. Uh. Here as we begin to close out. Um. You're uh, currently in transition from the first realm to the second realm. Um, with your, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to move, move that way with your, your, uh, with as a, as a lifestyle, you know, uh, um, for your, your income and, 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 and everything. So I guess, could you tell, talk a little bit about, uh, your plan going forward and, uh, um, how you're going about doing this? Well, um, currently, um, the plan is, uh, is, well, first step is trying to acquire some, uh, some land um would like to you know grab enough acreage to be able to have a uh you know a humble dwelling on it and uh room for a shop and and be able to utilize that shop to share space for other members in the community um and uh you know we already have a couple couple people on board and and we're all working together towards that goal and um we each you know we have our own skill sets and stuff but um Part of that plan is 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 to become, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, start start my own business and become my own uh, my own boss. So then I'm able to uh, dedicate more time to a homestead operation and and um, and 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 that factor, um, you know, even even getting in there and um, working with uh, other like-minded individuals. Um, that have a good good collection of knowledge and skills um, would be able to uh, become pretty self-sufficient in, in a short term I would like to believe um, as far as uh, power production solar power wind power um, and then um, you know uh, being able to provide uh, um, I uh, you know I have a kind of a, a goal um, within the first year of um, of uh, obtaining the uh, the land, I would like to uh, become at least fifty percent uh, self reliant for uh, produce and and such and 
musicians and and that hard as far as um you know designing developing a, a, a year-round greenhouse that can be utilized for fresh produce and um you know uh um, already starting the process of uh, starting um, fruit trees, um, seedlings or saplings, whatever you'd want to call them. So just just to get them sprouted and hopefully started. So uh, once the uh, future um, acquire of land is 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 met, then uh, find a location, and plant some fruit trees, and you know all towards uh, trying to just take some steps now to um, little little ways that I can prepare to carry things over when uh when the transition is made um and then uh another portion of that is uh trying to uh keep up uh um the long you know um find in an area and then uh keep up and trying to once again i mean even in the country you still have you know um maybe under under certain types of uh ordinances and such but if you get the right location and and uh, I, I believe that you you might be able to go by without even barely being noticed most days, you know. And that's that's ultimately kind of my goal. Um, so eh, there's only one way to find that out, and uh, that's to keep mm -hmm. going forward, you know. Um, seems like every day I kind of run into some kind of new roadblock in one way or another, but um, just keep the faith that, uh, you know, the universe um, – already set me on this path and 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 um the synchronicity has um come together and 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 you know uh cross paths with other individuals that have the same goals and desires and and have the same beliefs and 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 ethics and morals and and that's that's actually you know absolutely fascinating um it, it makes me excited um it's just uh it's just a challenge just to get get the first step done you know mm -hmm. i i personally believe once once the first step is done in that plan that everything else will will not immediately but i believe everything will fall in place in in, in due time right after that um because mm -hmm. uh i i have a pretty pretty decent amount of resources at hand and um and yeah i mean <laughs> that's that's pretty much it i suppose um the uh, long term would be, you know, just like what we discussed before, and that's, uh, um, you know, having networking between the different second realm um, sovereign territories and and things of that nature. Um, you know, the possibility of being able to um, manufacture certain things, so so um, you know, we can find more and more ways to become independent of servile society. Period. You know, but one thing in the back of my head always kind of pops up and keeps telling me like at some point certain things i'm sure i'm not going to say everything but certain things i believe may be unattainable without having a first round proxy merchant you know mm -hmm. like you had mentioned earlier so sure. um you know but that's 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 the plan for now um is right now just working and um trying to find the place really so just yeah. planning getting the little little things that can be done now and get them done yeah yeah very good well i'll, I'll second that uh I've, I've noticed that too that uh the right people <laughs> are getting involved at the right time um with the right skills um like with with uh, yeah the, the right necessary skills so um it's uh yeah it's the things things are uh i, I and i guess i'll it's, I, I don't know i, I think people just kind of need, need to see a vision i i just i i, I guess i did did kind of did too but it seems like it's very very possible um it's it's already coming together in fact so um yeah really it's uh right uh, self, self-sufficient homesteads and then um networking between each other in such a way so that we don't even need the need the first realm um and uh it's it's definitely attainable uh it's definitely attainable but uh again there's going to be a role for proxy merchants it's part of the second realm strategy um so there's still going to be uh you know if you if you want some of that first realm interaction there's there's going to be ways to obtain that um but uh obviously uh um Obviously, uh, sacrifices have to be made in either direction, um, uh, minor or, or major, depending upon, um, obviously, just depending upon uh, what we're talking about. But um, I guess um, 
any uh, anything else you want to uh, any other closing thoughts for the listeners here? I don't really have any other uh, any other questions or, or topics. I I'm I'm happy to hear that uh, you're 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 making the transition and uh, things are, are you know going maybe going slow but uh, but but uh, but going. Um, and uh, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Any other closing thoughts for the listeners? No, um, nothing that I can think of off the top of my head. I suppose um, I, I really appreciate you. Inviting me on here. I enjoyed the talk. Um, kind of a couple goof ups there, but you know, that'll happen from time to time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're well, only that's... human. So, hey, um, that's, that, that's the worst but, uh... happened. You're, you're, all, you're all good, man. I've done, I've done way dumber things um, on live radio before, so you're okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Well, hey, it happens sometimes, I suppose. So, but uh, ultimately, I mean, really, uh, um, just want to say uh, love everybody out there. Even if I don't know you, if people can hate somebody without knowing them, I can love somebody without knowing them. So um, everybody. Oh, it's like we may be having some connection issues. Oh, crap. Oh, there, there we go. There was another phone call that came in. My bad. <laughs> no worries um, at all. No worries at all. So I, I got, the, last, the last thing I heard you say. You can edit that out and then I can just say something. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're good. The the last thing I heard you say was uh, um, people can um, hate people without know them, knowing them. You can love them. Yeah, that's the last thing I heard. You, last thing, last thing we heard from you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I mean, if if people are thinking, uh, you know, they're on the fence about this type of this this um, you know, endeavor, I I, I say go for it. Um, really, because um, what else? What else do we legitimately? have to lose at this point because um um <laughs> what are, are we are we planning on being stuck in servile society you know uh, uh, do, we, do we want to you know bust our backs for until we're in our 60s or even later you know in, in our generation or the later generations or or do we want to do we want to set an example of what can really be possibly done and and legitimately revolutionize the way people people look at life you know i i think that's a real possibility that uh we can do things like this and um and with the collective effort and support of uh many other like-minded individuals we can we can attain a free society and um show 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 the servile society like hey you don't you don't need to have this you don't need to have that you can all provide it for yourself um mm -hmm. and um you know it's more liberating you don't you don't have to work you know break your back for for your whole life in a factory just to retire and barely enjoy your life you know um you can enjoy your life and and live it at the same time it's it's entirely possible so mm -hmm. yeah yeah yep there you go i'm right there with you right there with you um well omen thanks a lot for for coming on uh, the bonnie podcast really appreciate it and uh yeah i uh, hope to to see you out here at uh at pasnia for uh for one of our events i'll, I'll mention it here publicly and uh as we close out but uh yeah fourth of july weekend anarchy day weekend uh here at the free republic of pasnia we're having a little get together and then bonnie fest too which is september 27th to october 4th um a full a full week of liberation um so uh um, yeah i do hope uh, to see you out here at a at a, a future event uh um, is that uh, on the agenda at some point um absolutely uh i planned on um uh, making it out there for the uh, July event and then the second Bonnie event there in September. Um, I've uh, already organized uh, days off with work and such. So, hmm. yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd uh, really love to make it out there and see how you guys got things going on and, and uh, have some discussions and and uh, be able to just spend some time with some, you know, like minded individuals. So mm -hmm. it's always always usually a pleasant, pleasant interaction. And and um yeah, no, I, I really look forward to it. Um, it I believe it's probably going to be one of the highlights of my summer here this year. Right so, <laughs> right on. Good to hear. Good to hear. Well, uh, um, thanks a lot. Uh, I, I'd, uh, yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll be in touch. All righty, man. Hey, you have yourself a wonderful day. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you stay free out there. <laughs> yeah. You too, man. You too. You too. All right, guys, and. Uh, all right, there you, uh, all right, guys, there you have it. Uh, um, there's uh, Omen, a conversation on Von Wingen cities. Hope you enjoyed it, found it valuable, um, all of those things. 
Um, and uh, yeah, as I begin to close out real quick, uh, we did just release a new product today over on the Liberty Under Attack publications website, uh, libertyunderattack.com. Uh, it is the Vonnie Beginner's Guide, a uh, short introductory pamphlet uh, designed to introduce Agoris and freedom seekers to the liberating freedom strategy of Vonnie. Uh, it's been made as cheaply as possible so that it can be purchased in bulk and uh, handed out at freedom festivals or whatever else. Um, check it out or place your order today. Just visit libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu guide. Again, libertyunderattack.com forward slash Vanu guide. And uh, shout out to Will on Twitter for inquiring uh, about such a pamphlet. Uh, it expedited something I'd already considered doing. Um, so uh, I do appreciate that. Uh, anyway, the website for this podcast is vonupodcast.com. Uh, please do make sure to subscribe to the podcast feed if you're listening on Fascist Tube uh, or even Library or Odyssey. Sometimes you release things on the podcast feed. They don't necessarily get up there or get up there as quick. And uh, please check out what we're building here at the Free Republic of Pasnia. Uh, we're currently working towards uh, food self-sufficiency. Uh, in fact, we've made a couple of large expansions in uh, just the past couple of weeks. We're up to 30-something birds, a combination of duck, uh, chickens, ducks, and six, uh, and now six new turkeys. Um, we doubled the lambs a couple weeks ago and uh, added three new goats this past weekend. Uh, we've also been doing some pretty intense milk fermentation experiments as we have a regular raw cow milks, cow's milk supplier now. Um, so, uh, we might just, we might just start slinging grass fed whey protein and some other interesting things on the LEO publication site soon. Uh, who knows, uh, beyond just what we're doing here though, uh, we're also working towards the developments uh, of, an, of an overarching sec realm network, as we talked about, um, very extensively today, uh, rebuilding all human institutions upon a foundation of peace and voluntarism, uh, instead of the coercion inherent, uh, in the first realm, uh, for all those details or to get involved, just visit paznia.com. That's P-A-Z-N-I-A.com. I uh, think that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, always remember, Vanu is yours for the making, and the second realm is yours for the building. Cheers. Is it possible to create pockets of freedom where personal autonomy is respected? In the novella, Hashtag Agora, Daniel LaRusso finds out the answer firsthand. After discovering Bitcoin, he becomes immersed in the cypherpunk underground. Encryption, ghost pads, temporary autonomous zones, and much more. He learns the benefits of freedom of these tools for self-liberation, and how truly free individuals could conduct their affairs outside of the servile society. Based on real individuals in modern-day Berlin, Germany, Hashtag Agora gives you a practical representation of how freedom pioneers can carve out pockets of freedom in an otherwise enslaved world. Get your paperback copy today by visiting tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash agoraanarchy. And for more titles like this, Please search for Liberty Under Attack publications on Amazon.